Hey friends, it's Master Trainer Margaret once again with this week's Tuesday tip. This week I'm doing something a little bit different. I decided to do a video talking about where to get started with exercise. Let's say that you are wanting to get back to doing your exercise or you've fallen off the wagon. I hate that term, but that's a commonly used term. What do you do in these situations where, okay, it's a new year, you want to start back, you feel like you're, you know, sabotaging yourself, holding yourself back. I just thought I would make a video that is hopefully going to be encouraging and give you some practical tips on planning your fitness in the new year. And of course, this video doesn't just apply to TTAP. A lot of these principles can apply to other workout routines or fitness routines. So I hope that these principles will be helpful for you as you evaluate your goals. And number one is don't stress too much about your form. The number one thing I hear about people when they're starting T-Tap is they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so worried that my form is not correct and if I don't do good form, then I'm not gonna get any results in activation. And yes, obviously I care about good form. I do form tips classes. I have several of those I can link below for basic workout. I have form instruction for floor workouts. It's important that you do the best you can and then you just progress. When I first started doing T-Tap, looking back, I lost most of the inches that I lost with T-Tap with terrible form. <laughs> looking back, I'm like, I did all kinds of things wrong and I still saw results. It still worked for me. I lost inflammation. I unclogged my lymphatic system. I gained strength. I put on lean muscle. It worked for me. Even when looking back now, knowing what I know, I didn't have that great form. I did the best I could. And then as I learned more, as I watched Teresa's videos, as I you know, read about good form, it all clicked and I got even better activation later. But it's more important for you to start rather than just let the idea of perfect form paralyze you because we don't, none of us have perfect form. It's all about going to your own best ability, which you will progress and get more flexible and more strong as you do your T-tap. This next one goes along with the other tendency to be perfectionist is that people get into analysis paralysis where they're like, I don't know if this is the right schedule. I don't know if this is the right workout. Ah, you, know, you, just, you just feel paralyzed. Baby steps, do one workout do another workout. If you don't like that workout, do a different workout. If you don't like floor workouts, do standing workouts. If you don't like standing workouts, do a chair workout. You don't need to look at the entire staircase or you're gonna get overwhelmed. You have to look at the first step of the staircase and get on that one. And then when you get on that one, you get to the next step. You just keep going. That's how you're going to move yourself into having a habit of working out. And with the analogy I used earlier about the staircase, don't skip, try to run up the stairs, skipping three stairs at a time, or you're gonna not make it all the way up because you're gonna fall. <laughs> you're not gonna have enough energy to make it to the top. You have to pace yourself. It's not a destination, it's the journey process to get there. A lot of people who, they miss one workout in their sequence and they're on a three month or three year vacation and they're just, they're just piecing out because they're all or nothing. And I get that because I'm that, I'm that way as well. But if you notice that tendency about yourself, pick it up the next day, pick it up the next week. Don't let it become a three month, three year, three decade vacation from exercise because it will catch up to you. And it is not just about inch loss and all that. That's kind of the side benefit of T-Tap, but it's about your mobility. You want to be able to move functionally and move well into your later years. You don't want to just let yourself rust from the inside out. You have to move to move the fascia and keep your lymphatic system going. It's important to move. So don't let that one day that you missed put you on a three month or three year hiatus from exercise. Just pick up where you were and keep on going. The next thing you need to do is know your preferences. Are you a scheduler? Are you a planner? Or are you more spontaneous? And if you're a scheduler or a planner type personality, you're gonna need to give yourself a little flexibility. <laughs> so let's say you wake up one day and you're supposed to do this certain workout that you had planned, but you're not feeling it. You didn't sleep well, you're under a lot of stress. Most people would not do anything and then beat themselves up for it, but you need to make it flexible, your plan's flexible to you. So let's say you do wake up and you don't have a lot of energy, instead of doing a 30 minute workout like you planned, you might do a 10 minute workout or a workout that's under 15 minutes. That's why I designed the workout set that I have that is 
all workouts under 15 minutes because a lot of people don't have a lot of time or they have health issues that impede them from doing longer workouts, you can tailor it to you. You can do three moves, four moves, and then you'll be feeling good that you moved because movement is so helpful. You can keep yourself feeling well without digging yourself into a hole or exacerbating adrenal or thyroid issues. And if you're the more spontaneous person where you don't like to plan and you just kind of go off how you're feeling, <laughs> that's fine too. I will say that these type of people oftentimes need a little bit of push into structure, but loosely. So for example, they might say, I want my goal this week is to work out three days this week. And then you just pick the three days that you feel like working out. And then at the end of the week, you're like, wow, I got in my movement. It wasn't rigidly scheduled to one day, but you were able to plug it in where you see fit. Oftentimes the more spontaneous people, they need a little bit of help fitting it into their day. And then they can focus on adding it to another activity or adding it before an activity that you already have in your day that's already scheduled in your day, like taking your dog for a walk, folding the laundry, whatever other things you already do in your day, you can kind of make it part of that day by adding it before or after something that you already do. I definitely recommend that you make your fitness goals based on athleticism and mobility rather than aesthetics. So focus on fitness goals that are oriented towards how you want to feel in your body, how strong you want to feel, your mobility, you're able to move better, feel better. I find that when people focus their fitness pursuits solely on aesthetics or what they look like, so I want to you know, lose interest or whatever, and they only focus on that, they're not focusing on the other aspects, I find that these people will burn out faster. They are also less likely to exercise if they're feeling good about themselves that day, then they might not exercise, and if they're feeling bad, then they might exercise. So if they're having a bad body image day, they feel like, oh, I gotta do extra, and if they're having a good body image day, they just won't work out which the goal is to be moving more. It's not necessarily based on how you feel about your body at the time. And then of course that can create a negative association that you have where you have that when you work out, it is only a punishment for your body, which should not be. You're working out because you enjoy it. You love how it makes you feel. You know it helps your hormones and your lymphatic system and stretches your fascia and gives you energy, all of these things. I find that when people base their goals on, like for example, they want to be able to do a 30 minute workout without getting too tired, they want to have energy to play with their kids and not feel like they need to be on the couch for a few hours each day, they want to have more energy in the first thing in the morning, they want to have better blood sugar regulation, better hormones, whatever your other goals are, fitness can help you with that. Workouts like T-Tag can help you with that. So view it in that way rather than just, I'm going to lose X amount of sizes because you will lose your motivation in the pursuit of that unless you're looking at the whole picture, which is overall health. And as we say in TTAP, people come for the inch loss and then they stay for the health benefits because you'll be doing it and you'll realize, wow, I had all these other health things improve when I started doing TTAP. And yes, they did lose inches too. But the inch loss is what I find attracts people, but the health benefits, like I said, keep people interested in doing TTAP. You also want to be flexible. I think I kind of touched on this earlier, but this one is for those with chronic illness, adrenal fatigue, thyroid disorders. You got to listen to your body and not push yourself into overdrive. It's important to make sure that you are flexible, that you're not going to dig yourself into a hole. We all know what it's like when you push yourself too much and then the next day you're like, I can't even get out of bed. You have to really listen to how your body is feeling. And because workouts like TTAP are powerful and they're very effective, you can do three to four moves and still get really good results and still move your body and feel good, even with just doing that little bit of movement. Because we're trained, again, that you gotta do harder, faster, stronger, all of this. But really, less is more. That's what Teresa always taught was less is more. So that definitely applies for those with adrenal thyroid issues, even pregnant and postpartum women as well. Another point is, please, do not solely focus on the scale. In fact, I recommend that you throw the scale out. And if you scroll back, you can see my other video that I did talking about my personal story. Scale is not an indicator of really much at all. Unless you have a plunge pool in your bathroom that tells you your body fat percentage, you don't know if that five pounds that you lost was fat tissue, muscle tissue, or water weight. We don't know. 
Measurements are so much more reflective of what's actually happening with regards to exchanging body fat for muscle mass. It can really give you a clearer picture and also it's less likely to fluctuate quite as much as the scale does because it is natural for that uh, scale weight to fluctuate because during different times of the month we will hold on to more water or be releasing water. And lastly, do it. Don't just talk about it. Don't just watch all of my videos and go, oh yeah, I need to actually try this. Do it. Write it on your schedule if you're a scheduler. Put it in your mind if you're not a schedule person and say, I'm going to do it because it makes me feel good and I enjoy it. The scheduler people will love checking it off of their checklist. And like I said, if you're someone who's more casual about it, you will enjoy how you feel from the workouts. The analysis paralysis, like I mentioned earlier, where you are, it's an avoidance coping mechanism where you don't really want to start it. So you kind of investigate it, look into it, but you never actually do it. That's actually a form of avoidance. It's a lot, what a lot of people will use if they're not feeling comfortable or ready. And honestly, sometimes you'll never feel ready to start anything new. You won't necessarily feel that, but you can actually move forward and then let the feelings follow. So you can move forward in your steps towards being healthier and moving more. And then you can let the motivation find you in the actual doing of the thing instead of the other way around. We often wait for the motivation to get us to exercise instead of actually doing the exercise and then letting that motivate you where you're like, wow, I have more mobility. I feel stronger. I can hold my child and not, you know, have hip pain. I can wake up in the morning and have energy. All of these things, you need to remind yourself of that because you're not gonna see results unless you actually do it. So you have to do it. And like I said, don't avoid it. Don't just talk about it. You have to actually buckle down and do it. And I promise you that the motivation will find you as you continue to do the workouts because it's addictive. It's addictive. It's fun. It's energizing. Your whole body loves it. Your body loves to move. It's made to move. So you're really, it's almost like you're going to be starting a habit. You're going to be starting it and you're going to start it today. You're going to get in there, do your workouts, and for those of you who like to check things off, you're gonna enjoy checking it off. For those of you who are more feelings-based, you're gonna be like, I love how it makes me feel. It's all good. So if you have some questions about starting up a new exercise regimen, questions about T-TAP, scheduling, whatever, feel free to comment below and I'd love to chat with you about this. I really enjoy helping people have the tools that they need to move forward in their fitness goals because I know it's overwhelming. The fitness industry is extremely large and loud and often contradictory. <laughs> so I hope that this video was helpful for you and gave you some encouragement to get out there and do it and start your exercise and let that motivation come after you start doing it. You will really see benefits. Your body will thank you for it for sure. And as always, I'll be back next week. I have a new exercise move I'm gonna be showing you guys that I'm really excited about. So be sure to come back next week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.